how to beat lovers. Do you ever have that? That you're getting into that lob lob rally and the rally never seems to end because everybody plays high balls. Well, that's probably your own fault. Why that is your own fault, we're going to explain in this video. Welcome to Paddle Tips. The question of this video, do you experience this on the court or do your opponents mostly play low balls? Let us know below. I think two things are very important for this video. Why are you getting lobbed? And what can you do when your opponent is going to lob you? The reason that you are getting lobbed is mostly your own fault because I think your ball is too easy. If your ball is easy, you are getting lobbed. If your ball would be difficult, it would be a mistake for your opponent to play an actual lob. So we have to work on a few things in order to get the quality of your ball better so you're not getting lobbed. So for instance, a very low ball is very difficult to lob. A very high ball is very easy to lob. So I think your opponent can play the lob when the contact point from your opponent is between the knee and maybe the hips. Uh, higher than that is slightly more difficult. So you have to think of a way to get the ball lower. And there are, I made an entire list of things that are important to keep the ball low. So you are getting lobbed when your ball is too high, when it's too soft. So when, when your ball is very soft, your opponent can lob you very easily. Also before the wall. When you are playing very fast and your opponent knows how to use the wall, when to use the wall, the ball is coming up as well. So then they can lob you very easily. So when you're playing too fast, it might be easier for your opponent. So you have to find the perfect speed or the right speed. So it's speed management and lowness management to keep your opponent away from lobbing the ball. Yeah, for the slow balls, your opponent has a lot of time. And when you have a lot of time, they can come underneath the ball or they can decide to play the lob. When the ball is like faster, then it's harder to play the lob, but it should be a fast ball that doesn't really reach the wall or when it reaches the wall, it is not going up and then it's hard to lob. So there are a few things that are very important for the height of the ball. If you're playing with topspin, uh, the ball will come up against the wall and then your opponent can lob you very easily. If you are playing your volleys maybe too flat, then the ball also comes up. So you need to have a lot of slice in the volleys in order to keep the ball low and then you can play fast and with slice if you play fast and flat the ball will come up if you play fast and spin the ball will come up so the only thing you can do is play slice and add that to a certain amount of speed that you need in that specific situation so for instance slice is very important this was miguel saying but if you're playing with too much slice from low to high, then the ball comes up again as well. So it's super important to go from high to low with your volleys. And that the slice is following through. If you are playing a lot of straight balls or through the middle, that's also a reason why the ball comes up a little bit more. If you're playing more to the fence or to the corner, um, your opponent will struggle a little bit with defending and then they will not lob you that much. So maybe the reason why you're getting lobbed is because of the angle you are playing with your volleys or with your bandejas. One of the biggest reasons you're losing the net position is because you don't have a bandeja. If you have a lot of slice in your bandeja and uh, a nice amount of speed, the ball will remain low. You should invest in finding or choosing the right amount of slice and speed. Playing the ball low. Technically wise, follow through longer with your follies and with your bandejas so the ball will slide through. 
so it will be harder for the opponent to play the lob. Finding or choosing the right bounce, so playing to the corner or play shorter sometimes, because if you are playing shorter before the wide line, then the ball doesn't come off the wall too much and then they cannot lob you. If you are playing towards the fence, the ball will bounce very funny and it would be hard to play the lob. Also, your opponent is closer to the net position, so he has to... It is slightly more difficult. So what can you do when your opponent is lobbing you all the time? Everything that we said and positioning wise. Maybe you are getting lobbed because you are very close to the net. And then your opponent knows that the, a lot of space is behind you and the lob is the perfect ball to play. Also, the lob is a very good shot and the most important shot in paddle. So if your opponent lobs a lot, deal with it because that's paddle. Playing low is not paddle, it's mini tennis. So it's very important to understand that the lob is the way to go. If you see that the, your opponent is lobbing a lot, you could also go a little bit back. So if you are further away from the net, it is easier to bandeja or smash that ball. So it really depends on what your opponent is doing, because if they're lobbing all the time, you can go backwards way more. Uh, if they're playing low all the time, you should go closer to the net. So it really depends on what your opponent is all about. So if you're getting into that lob lob rally, try to stay away from the, from the net a little bit more, because they're not going to play low anyway. A good player would play low and then high. So then it's important when you're there to play the bandeja more often than the smash because if you're smashing a lot the ball is easier to defend. You can only smash when you want to score the ball. I try to invest more in the bandeja with more slice and more effect, more towards the fence, more to the corner and try to play shorter sometimes. Because if they have fully the ball they can never lob. I think I don't know about you, Miguel, but if the ball comes off the wall, I find it easier to lock. That's the easiest way. Yeah. It's so playing deeper is easier for your opponent it's when they have to when they know how to use the wall. Yeah, because they got so much time. Yeah. So I can wait till it touches the wall and then I'll play the lock instead yeah. of taking it really fast when it's coming. Yeah. So maybe shorter is the way to go. The bajada is the way to get out of that lob lob rally because if the lob is very high, you have time to come close to the wall and hit the ball very high. One of the reasons that you're staying into that folly folly rally is because you're letting the ball drop. And if you have a low contact point, you can never play on the feet of the opponent. So when you're getting lost, don't watch the ball. Don't be a ball watcher. Run towards the glass, stay there, drink a cup of coffee and then hit the ball as high as possible. And then you can play the bajada from high to low. We also have a video about the bajada. You can check it out if you don't know what the bajada is. The bajara is the way to get out of the lob lob rally. And what will happen is because you hit the ball very high on the feet of the net player, the net player will get closer to the net and then there is more space behind the net player to play the lob. Your objective as a player at the back is to move the net player from forwards to backwards. So try to variate on playing on the feet, playing a lob. Because if your opponent is close to the net, they have to run further to get the to get the lob so then it's super effective to make your opponent run a lot in spain i realized that i was moving way too much and i didn't move the net player so much so it's better for you at, uh, at the back to to play short and deep short and deep not really left and right because you don't want to make your opponents move from left to right at, when they're at the net you want your opponents to move from backwards to forwards. That will have way more impact. So lobbing is the way to go. So that's why you do have to just consider that your opponents are going to lob. If your opponents lobbing, have more space from the net and really try to invest in having more slice, longer follow throughs, because then you will hold the net position for as long as possible. I think it goes wrong when you're trying to score the volleys. And if the players at the back have a very good defense, they can use the wall and just play in lob. You just want to hold in that position to keep the ball low, low, low. And that will give the most impact on your game. 
Thank you everybody for watching. I hope you liked this video. If you want to see more videos like this, please let me know below. If you want to recommend any video that you would like to watch to improve your game, let us know below. Um, if you have any questions, also let us know below. Um, by the way, I'm coming to Sweden the 24th of May to the 30th in Jarfala, if I say it correctly. I know I, I said it like it's Arabic, but it's, yeah. it's in Sweden. Knäckebröd. Knäckebröd, yeah. So um, if you want to be there, let me know. Hasta luego. Ciao. Ciao. Adios. Thank you, Miguel. Later. Doei. Hey, Dan.